you so much for speaking to Good Times. It's been a while. It has, yes. <laughs> and well, uh, welcome back to Delhi. You brought the sun with you. <laughs> I know. I'm so I'm told. So, how blunt are you as a person? I'm very diplomatic. Uh, that is a Libran quality, uh, and also something I perhaps inherited from my father, where he told me also, if you don't want to be controversial and you don't want to get into trouble, then give a boring interview. Uh, you know, and and we're so you know we want to make headlines and we want to be quoted, and so we end up getting into trouble. Uh, and uh, I think I've, I'm more like him in terms of the fact that I tend to be very dispassionate. I don't get involved emotionally otherwise, and I weigh up the sides. I think I would have made a good lawyer. Oh well, yes. I mean, come to think of it, uh, banker, actor, author. Now what Maybe next? Maybe lawyer. Maybe lawyer. Yeah. You know, your brother said something so interesting. He said really? the girls in my family have these fantastic degrees from these great <laughs> universities, yeah. but they all want to act. Yeah, because it's a lovely job. <laughs> it's magical, um, and you know, you have so much fun, and you deserve that. And as we know, an education is not about getting uh, a sensible job. It's just about you know being the best that you can be. True. And also, have you ever had any hair-raising experiences? So many. My God. I mean, I now use the fact that, and I can't anymore. Uh, but I've been using the fact that I'm a new mother as an excuse for most <laughs> fashion faux pas. You know, dal stains on my clothes, the hair being out of place, not you know, uh, being properly epilated, and doing all those things that you know we try to meet these standards of what uh, women have to meet. Uh, and now that my daughter's a little bit older, I can't use her as an excuse anymore. But of course, many issues. I have gone just between us. <laughs> everyone is watching. I think I've gone like 18 days without washing my hair once. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean that happens with new moms. No, this, um, was, this was this much was much before I had an eye. <laughs> oh my lord! Yeah. 18 days. Yeah. Was that for a roll or was it just no, like? No, it was just like I was like, oh, kal kar lenge, kal kar lenge, kal kar lenge. And you know, dry shampoos in the bath. Also, I mean, you wrote a book. Which I would recommend you all read it because it's an interesting read. The perils of being moderately famous. Now, how do you deal with those two toddlers who are dealing with the perils of being superbly famous? I know, I know, I know. It's 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 crazy because you know we never had to deal with these when we were growing up, and like it's absurd to think that they're photographed every day. And you know, there's like I think there's a couple of paps who are. Uh, assigned to Temur for example and every time he goes out they know where he is you know one of course as a parent feels it's disturbing it has a psychological impact on the child um, but then a practical person also thinks this is now a part of life he is someone who is born to famous parents and uh, you know Inai also belongs to yeah. uh, you know a world which is you know with famous people this is how you know this is her life now and if you explain it to them Perhaps they'll understand, but I feel like childhood is about innocence. It's not about being followed and photographed and documented and people, uh, you know, salivating over those pictures. And I feel like somewhere, perhaps that innocence will be lost, especially when they get older and they want privacy. You know, we all have a right to privacy, and we've chosen to be actors and we've chosen to give up some privacy, but they haven't made that choice. But no, I mean, honestly, Inai and Taimur both deal with the paps like bosses. I mean, they're just so aware that. Temur I mean, does like know, me. Right? Yeah, I know. They're probably like, I mean, he thought I think that there's like just friends who don't come that close. But he's always like, why are they so far? And now they also know because everyone is whipping out phones and taking videos. You know, children from a young age, like they're a few months and they're stopping and staring into the camera, posing. You know, so life is different now, not just yeah. including social media. At home also we're taking their pictures all the time and we have to remember to put away the phones and let them just be. Can you imagine years later if now uh, and I was to go through her pictures and I said, Mom, why did you make me wear that? Yeah, I know, for sure. <laughs> Certainly, I think yesterday she was wearing something and I saw it and I was like, oh, that t-shirt is oversized and those shoes don't match. But I didn't get a dress that day. <laughs> and what about your niece? I mean, she is like yeah. uh, really yeah. making the yeah. headlines. And I'm very proud of her. I mean, I think, of course, in terms of the choices that she's made and in terms of her performance, people have appreciated that. But I like the way that she's um, being herself, that she's confident and that she uh, is not pretending to be anyone. And I think people are, are relating to that, you know, the way that she's conducting herself in interviews. I think. You've taken a break of sorts, but I heard you say that this summer we can expect something from you. In the OTT space, would you like to explore that or films? Well, yeah, OTT is uh, web, is that digital? What is yeah, OTT? digital. Yeah, yeah. okay. I yeah. Just over, OTT for me is also over, over the, the top. top. So I know, like, I've just over the top gotten, space. <laughs> I've now just gotten used to yeah, that. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm actually looking at uh, the, digital, di the digital space at the moment, which is also a huge time commitment, which is what makes me nervous. But I think it's time to take the plunge. Uh, and uh, in the summer, there's been a couple of um, 
scripts that have been offered to me, which I'm uh, thinking about and drawing, and I think that you know it's high time now that I start taking on more work. And and also, you know, you are surrounded by female trailblazers. So how has that shaped your feminist legacy, if I can use that word? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's it's you know you are what you grow up around and you take for granted. And I grew up around women who uh, firstly valued education. So it was not a big deal for me to be given the same education that my brother was given. I didn't have to fight for these things in the way that you know my my grandmother, my mother's mother, had to fight for the right to do an MA. Um, you know, my mother again had to explain to people why she was working after she got married. That's not something that I have to justify because certainly to my family and uh, to the world that I belong to, which may be just a small part of what is India, but at least in my immediate circle, these things are taken for granted. And these, you know, are, are for mothers have fought for. So I'm just privileged to have benefited from that. As you said, I'm surrounded by women who are strong, who are opinionated, who do exactly what they want to and don't apologize for it. I know that other women don't enjoy that. And therefore, it's important for, I think, the women who do enjoy that to speak out and support the women who don't. So what is that one female stereotype that's your pet peeve? There are um, a few, but of course, the women who play down their intelligence um, annoys me. You know, the ones who words like bimbets or dumb blondes, not talking about hair color here. Uh, but I think that some people, especially to flatter the male ego, uh, you know, I think that women play down their intelligence and I don't think that they need to do that. And one empowering advice that you would pass on to Inaya? Uh, I think she's going to be teaching me, you know. Uh, I really do. Um, but I would want her, I want to give her the skills to enable her to be whatever she wants to be. I want her to be unafraid uh, I want the world to change because I think she's perfect. I want the world that she's grown, you know, that she grows up into, to, to complement that. Because I feel that children are beautiful and innocent. The world is not, yeah. and children often end up becoming more like the world. And I wish it could be the other way around. Mm. Okay, if you were given a choice to invite four women, dead or alive, for dinner, who would those four women be? Oh God, these are very difficult questions, but Agatha Christie for sure, <laughs> because I, I mean, she, I love reading her books and. Uh, she was also a fascinating person, and uh, I would love to meet her. Um, Eleanor Roosevelt, as someone who was a statesman and you know really supported her husband at work and had wonderful uh, philanthropic pursuits, um, I feel like I would invite my mother because she feels left out uh, <laughs> recently, and uh, especially because I'm in the city and I haven't told her that I'm here. I would definitely invite her for dinner, uh, and then because I can't be without Inaya, Inaya should also hang out at the table. So it would be Agatha Christie, Eleanor Roosevelt, my mother, and my daughter. Okay, now before we wrap up, a quick rapid fire starters or dessert. Dessert. Kunal or Inaya, the name you would get tattooed. Oh, oh huh? that's terrible. Uh, Inaya. <laughs> Your idea of feminism. Um, my idea of feminism is uh, is just equality. Men and women are the same, maybe not bio biologically, uh, but just because you're a physically stronger sex doesn't mean that you are superior. And your favorite film of Karina? Jabi Met. Um, Gorgeous sarees are stunning accessories. Gorgeous sarees. Um, I don't like jewelry so much. Okay, your female role model. Mm, my mother. One wish. Uh, I'm feeling very guilty, obviously, because I've. Yeah, she doesn't her know job. you're in the city. <laughs> ah, we've let it out. One wish for women on Women's Day. Um, my wish uh, for all women on Women's Day is that you may have the things that I took for granted: uh, the right to uh, play, the right to be educated, the right to marry freely, the right to bear children when you want to, the right to work when you want to, and the right to secure uh, life free of violence. Um, that's my wish for all of you. And in the modern discourse, in the industry, that's, which is that one change you want to see? Because there are a lot of changes, but that one change you want to see? Uh, in, God, in, the, in the film industry. In the film industry. Um, as you said, there are many changes now. There are women who are uh, opening films and you know female protagonist roles. I still think it's not the norm. Um, and I also appreciate films like uh, Vijay the Wedding Have Come, which are not just you know, issue-based films, that are also lighter films with women, and those films have done well. Of course, things like uh, gender parity when it comes to income is something that people are like, oh, you know, um, you know, how much do women want? But I really think that these are things that women deserve, and if women are working hard and are bringing in uh, the tickets, they should be paid as much as men are. You've just told us about your bad hair day, yeah. but what is that one regime that you follow to, for your crowning glory? My bad hair day, actually I didn't even tell you about it, it was actually when I dyed my hair purple and half of it fell out because I didn't even realize to dye my hair color purple. I then I first had to bleach it 
uh, white and then the purple color would catch and this was again recreational when I was in college not even for money uh, and it was about my hair and I was crying because when I used to brush it it would come out in clumps and it got so dry. How do you maintain your crowning glory? So the... I, I usually leave it you know luckily uh, you live in Mumbai which has humidity in the air uh, it's kinder to the skin than places like Delhi which can be harsher on the skin uh, but uh, you know and I've got naturally straightish hair um, so I've generally left it but of course for styling and for work you do have to put your hair through a lot. So um, I was very happy to be introduced to Be Blunt's range of products. They, of course, people have known them yeah. as people who've looked after hair and actors' hair for a very long time. But they started these wonderful products. The ones that I like are dry shampoo again. I haven't gone 18 days, <laughs> but sometimes three or four days, and it really helps to lift your hair and give it some vitality. Thank you so much, Thank and you. hope to see you soon yes. and back on screen. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.